Hey you guys, it's me Crystal from Marching North and today I'm going to show you how to do embroidery stitches with a punch needle. I'm using my ultra punch needle with six strands of embroidery floss. I'm going to set my ultra punch to a stitch height of two. First, I'm going to fill in these diamond shapes. The fabric that I'm punching on is weaver's cloth and I'm using a Morgan no-slip embroidery hoop. When you're doing embroidery style stitches with a punch needle, you can't do too long of a stitch or the loops will pop out of the back. It's a good idea to try to keep your stitches about maybe a half inch at the longest. The stitches I'm doing right now are pretty short, but I'll be showing you some longer ones here in a minute. When I'm doing embroidery like this with a punch needle, I usually leave a longer tail whenever I trim the threads on the back. I think it just makes it a little more secure. I just want to mention that I don't really recommend doing this kind of punch needle embroidery for anything that's going to take any type of abuse or need to be washed. This is more for decorative things that you're going to hang on your wall. Now you can see I'm making my stitches a little bit farther apart. They're probably about a half inch. My favorite part about punching like this is that you can fill in an area really quickly. I think the stitches kind of end up looking like a long and short embroidery stitch. You can see here on the back that the loops are spaced pretty far apart. When you first start punching a section, it's helpful to make the first stitch or two shorter to really anchor it into the fabric. For these diagonal stripes here, I'm finally doing some really longer stitches to kind of show you that you can actually do longer stitches as long as you're careful and your thread is anchored well in the fabric. The length of stitch that I'm doing here is about the longest that I've personally had success with doing with just regular punch needle. You can make it longer, but you have to hold the loop from the back to keep it from popping out. And I personally kind of feel like that makes it kind of defeats the whole purpose and you might as well just do regular embroidery at that point. But that's just my two cents. Here's how the back's looking at this point. You can see it's kind of a hot mess because I leave the long tails on the ends just for security, but no one's going to see this part anyway, so I'm not real worried about it. Now at this point, I finished the diagonal stripes and I'm going to show you a cool trick I like to do there in the space between the stripes. For this technique, I flipped the piece over and I'm going to be punching loops onto the other side, but they're going to be spaced really far apart. So for the first one, you have to kind of hold the loop like that to make sure it doesn't get super tiny or pop out. But then I make the loop space about a half inch apart all the way down the row. And it ends up kind of looking like a row of French knots. 
Just take it slow and every once in a while flip over your work and make sure that the loops are actually staying in the fabric. You can see I have this one little loop that didn't quite stay in right, but if you just kind of pull on a little bit, sometimes you can fix it. When you go to trim the thread, hold it with your finger when you're pulling your punch needle up so it doesn't pop the loop out, and then leave a long tail like the rest of the ends. Now I'm going to make a black outline all the way around the design. For this part, I'm using three strands of black embroidery floss, and I'm still using the same settings on my Ultra Punch. I'm just going ahead and punching right over the stitches I already made. Here's how it looks once the black outline is done. And here's how it looks once it's all finished. For the details, I used a needle and embroidery thread to make the cactus spikes. And I also went in with my punch needle and light green embroidery thread and made the little stripes. I really love the different textures that doing all these different techniques together gives the finished piece. I definitely recommend putting glue on the backs of the loops that are spaced super far apart. Like I was saying earlier, I'm just going to be using this as a wall decoration, so I'm not going to worry about gluing the whole back. As far as how I'll finish this piece, well, I'll save that for another video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for more crafty tutorials and DIYs. Thanks for watching!